We haven't been in there before and I don't know what's gonna happen. There's so many expensive things around. Hold out. In 2023, we found a diamond in the rough, an abandoned Tayana that had been laying dormant under a tent for many years. It had extensive water damage inside that had scared off all potential buyers. After many inspections, we took a huge risk and bought her, knowing full well of the challenges that lay ahead. We spent the next year fixing her up, getting her ready for the Indian Ocean. After completing a trip through West Sumatra, Indonesia to sea trial her, we now know what else needs to be done. We're about to head back into the boatyard for the last time before our departure to tackle those last remaining jobs getting her blue water ready. Join us as we get ready for the Indian Ocean. So we're actually hauling out in two days time, but we've got quite a bit of preparation to do to Nancy to before we even go into the boatyard. So we've got a couple of major jobs that we plan to do, well three major jobs that we plan to do while we are in the boatyard. We're going to replace the standing rigging, which is the major job. Uh, we're going to sort out the bottom, so repaint the bottom, do the prop speed, and get all below the waterline ready, because uh, we've got barnacles. So we've got to get that ready for this year, for the season of sailing, so we can go super fast. And then the deck. So we've got to finish off the deck. We're going to be recorking, sanding, and make, finishing off the teak deck, and then sorting out the capping rails as well. So they're the three major jobs that we're going to be doing in the boatyard. But first, we'll get into this anchorage for tonight, and tomorrow, we've got to get to work and start de-rigging the boat, taking all the sails off and get it ready. I'll just keep back. Safety glasses on? Yeah, and now, now I've got flight glasses on. Good job. So this is our anchorage for the next couple of days, couple of nights until we go into the marina. We'll be heading straight into the marina and being lifted out in the morning straight away. But so this is the bay, straight across there into the sunset is where the marina is. So we just anchored off at one of the little islands out in front. Uh, it's a really shallow bay. The entrance into the marina is over a sandbank and we need to get a pilot to take us in there and we haven't been in there before and I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, here we are. Good start. The main job we're doing in the boatyard is replacing the standing rigging. That's these metal wires here. So our rigging is about 15 years old. It's always recommended to change your rigging every 10 years. So ours has expired for the last five years. It's kind of why we've been sailing quite um, conservatively since we've had the boat. To replace the standing rigging, we're actually gonna take the mast off. And so this is so that we can check the plates at the bottom where it's bolted to the boat and just give it a good inspection. It also allows us to measure properly the length of the wires so that we can replace them as well. So we haven't done this before. This is a first for us. So it's gonna be a new territory, but pretty exciting, I think. To prepare for the mast to come out, we need to take everything off of the rigging so the sails we've got the spinnaker pole here the boom bag the lazy jags uh, the running rigging it all needs to come down pre in preparation we're going to start first thing with the head sails they're the easiest Angie 2 is a cutter rig so we've got two head sails and they're both on furlers so the wire that's holding up the mast up here is actually got the sail on it so we're going to take the sails off the furlers are going to need a service as well There's two halyards, the red one and the yellow one here. One's for the Janelle, one's for the stay sail. Because the sails always stay on the furlers, I don't actually know which one's for which. <laughs> There's a lot of rope here in the yellow one though, so I reckon the yellow's for the stay sail. So I don't know where to find out. Still getting to know the boat. <laughs> but definitely still getting to know the boat in some ways. And that's, that's what's really good about pulling off this mask because like, we're really going to understand the boat a lot more, know the lines a lot more. Um, yeah, we have to run a couple of lines through the boom and stuff as well, you know, so we really are re-rigging the boat and really understanding it again. The sail's still all fouled up, so it's not going to just go yeah. whoopity bam But uh, yeah, we'll have to pull it out now. The wind is still definitely coming off the stern and going forward, so it's sort of like we're going sailing dead downwind. Uh, yeah, so the sail's going to go off the bow. 
We'll see how we go with the stay out before we do the Janai. We got the stay sail down. You can see though we started sailing because we have to pull it tight so the sail doesn't flap off the bow and over the water so we can drop it. But uh, the wind still sort of picked up. We tried to we tried to push the stern around so the bow was facing into the wind now to set up for the Genoa, but you know the current's just too strong and we instantly just swung back. But we just have to see how we go. We need to get we need to get the Genoa down. We did, hey, we took off a bit <laughs> There was a, a, a motorboat in front of us and it left, so we are like, well, we've got, we've got plenty of space now if we sail off the anchor. <laughs> we were tied up on the anchor, it definitely pulled right up on that. I think we're about to spin around and stuff, right? <laughs> it's gonna fit, Lula. Can we fit this circle in the square? Push the sides in. Santa trying to take his sack down the chimney. All the presents. Oh, well, that's the uh, both head sails all sorted. Packing up the lines. Man, our Genoa sheets are so stiff. Like, look at this. Big 16 mils. Like, they're still fine. But like, look at the shape of them. They're like yeah. hard and crusty. Like this. When we first bought Nanji 2, we noticed they were really stiff and I soaked them in warm water with um, fabric softener in there just to see if it would loosen For them up. a couple up. of and days, eh? Yeah, it, it hasn't at all. So this is just how they are. Besides them being stiff, there's nothing wrong with them. Like they're still usable, but it's just really difficult. One day it'll be nice to replace these but first. Running rigging while it works, it works. Let's just concentrate on things that need fixing. Yeah, this is in the want basket, isn't it? This is a want, not a need. Unfortunately. Should they get a oh. bit looser like through the section that's constantly used? But like the bit that lies out flat. Oh gosh. As our mast is keel step, so that means that the mast goes all the way through the deck of the boat and then it's bolted onto the keel. The space between the inside and the outside basically, we've got uh, this canvas cover that's zip tied on and sticker flex around, but then there's a, some sort of filler between the deck and the mast, so to keep the mast obviously tight and in the center. Uh, so we're just gonna have to, I'm not sure what's in there, basically. So we'll take this canvas cover off and have a bit of a look. We'll have to clean up all this old Sikaflex and make all that nice and fresh when it goes back in. But uh, the, the rigger as well that's taken the mast off the boat is also very curious to see what uh, is done in this area because, yeah, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do when we put it back in. Grimy. Yeah, it's a little bit filthy. Whoever did it, they sort of blue taped it on to make it neat and then they never took the blue tape off. There's quite a few things like that on this mask. There's a lot of blue tape that we'll have to clean up. <laughs> so it's good that we're taking the mask down so we can give it a clean top to bottom. Seal it up. Seal it up, but yeah, I don't know. It's just like that sicker flex. We did have a bit of a water leak down the mast when it like when it bucketed with rain. That was obviously caused through like the ceiling somewhere around here. You can see like it's all quite tight. But at the back here, all this has just come loose. So I can see why there was water dripping down. Yeah. All the sicker flex that held on this bit of canvas thing, collar, boot collar thing, that's all old as. You can see that's just 
super crusty there. I think I'll have to operate and cut all this sort of rubber stuff off with the Stanley or something in a, in a little bit, but in the meantime, moving right along, let's get the spinnaker pole down off the mast. Let me know so, I'll hoist you up. No, you don't have to hoist me up. I'll just climb up the foot pegs. I've only oh, got to go yeah. to the first spreader. Oh, that's easy. Um, so we do have to take this down anyway because uh, we need to fix it because last year when we were heading over into Indonesia, we had big old squall, 40 knots on the nose for the hours between 1am and 5am. So we just had to sort of sit there and drift in it, hove to for those four hours. But during that blow, it blew it off the track. Uh, it clamps onto a track on the front of the mast and Hello, that broke so it doesn't attach to the mast anymore. So we just had to tie it off up there and that's just where it stayed. So it's time to get it down. We'll have to fix this because I think we'll be using this a little bit as we do sail. We hope so. <laughs> That'd be nice. Oh, just dead downwind would yeah. be nice, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, so I'll have to go up and untie it. It's just lashed on there at the moment. So there's more you can see in the cast here though. From memory, I'm pretty sure there was like a Teflon seal or something like that that was in there. So it would make it slide up and down the track of the mast, but that's all blown out. So we'll have to take this cap off and see if they can't remake it in there or something. I feel like you should be able to just slide something in there so it fits back on that track. We'll see what we can find. All right, well, that's all the easiest stuff done. Everything forward of the mast is off. Halyards are tied. Now we need to deal with the mainsail. So we really have the option because the boom needs to be lifted off. Um, when the boom is on the ground in the boatyard, we do plan on running another reefing line. I figure we're gonna to have to stand the boom up to get the, get the rope through because we haven't had any success in trying to feed a rope back through because one of the reefing lines snaps. So we can't only have two reefing lines, but we wanna make sure there's three reefing lines when we, when we leave the boatyard. For now, because uh, the boom will be taken off separately to the mast, so if I just disconnect all of the carts off of the mainsail track and then we just leave the sail because it's a full batten main. So we'll just leave the sail in the sail bag on the boom and the crane can lift all of that off at once and then we'll take the sail off when it's on the ground. I think that's the easiest option now. What do you reckon, Mum? Yeah. One of the beauties about Nanty 2 is that all of the reefing lines and the main sheet come back to the cockpit here. So uh, we've got our cleats here and our winches as well and all of these lines need to be packed up as well. I've got to feed all the lines through back to the mast because this will all be taken off with the boom. Helping mum. What? Outhaul and two reefing lines. Two of the three we need. Did you break the... I broke my Allen key that I need. We're getting there, we're getting a lot of things done. It's been a big day in the sun though, it's pretty hot here in Thailand. And you know, when we anchored here yesterday, there were so many jet skis and obviously a little hot spot. You can see the umbrellas on the beach, but we weren't too sure what was in here. And after the day today, just sweating it out, we're like, let's go in there and see what's on land. And man, glad we did. This is sick. We've got like coconuts, we've got food coming. Yeah. Stoked. I think it's like a backpackers island. You can actually camp here in a tent. They have yeah. like an ATV track oh, yeah. um, and there's lots of activities in the water. So they've got jet skis, paddle boards. You can do, what's that thing where they tow you behind the boat? Scurfing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's pretty chilled out. Like oh, it's yeah. pretty cool. Like, yeah. I think if you're like a backpacker or you're on a budget, this is a cool place to come and stay. It's really nice. Have to work out what it's called. They got like a little hut for showers and it's quite simple and basic. But yeah, if you're on a budget, it's a good place to come, I think. There's a peacock. Just look over there. Yeah. There's a peacock. Yeah, a peacock. Wow. Mummy. There's a peacock. Yes, yeah, it's an ammo. A 
peacock. Wow, what colour? It's a fluffy back. It's a fluffy back, does yeah. it? Yeah. It's got long feathers? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I'll push, I see. Oh, oh, he is. Yeah, I see too. Wow, he's a big bird, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big bird. He's a big bird. It's boatyard day. There's nothing like waking up just to the slap of all your halyards on the mast. Everything's all packed up. We're all ready for the mast to be removed. We're meant to be picking up the pilot in about an hour's time from across the bay over here. We, the wind blew up pretty strong from the west and y yesterday afternoon, which turned this bay into an absolute choppy, messy pit. And it sort of, uh, it meant we didn't get to do a recon mission in the dinghy yesterday afternoon. So we're sort of going into this a little bit blind. I've got, the mar I've got the lead marker, and there is markers going in. Uh, I've been told they're only on one side. So I will get over there and we'll see what boats are doing when they enter, and hopefully we can follow someone in until we reach the pilot. It's always a bit of a stressful situation going in. You know, there's, there's the approach, there's maneuvering around other boats. There's a lot of really big, rich, fancy boats in this marina too. So that's gonna, make things a little bit more interesting when we're maneuvering and yeah then the hauling out and just watching people deal with your house you know putting your trust in other people to deal with your boats always a bit of a stressful situation and then you know the pending work to do and then the pending attack on your wallet at the end makes the boat yard a very you know it's a it's a weird feeling whenever you're in the boat yard but uh, we'll, we'll start getting ready i'm ready to do the work just don't know about everything else. Whilst we are in the boat yard, we'll be doing uh, morning toolbox meetings with our patrons like we have previously. And so Benita will be running that. Uh, and so every morning you'll get an update from Benita if you are one of our patrons. So if you'd like to see the work and the progress that's going on, be sure to join the Froth family. There's a link in the description below. Let's get this boat ready for the Indian Ocean. I just messaged to try to figure out where we're picking up the pilot and they've changed it an hour later. So that's actually really good because we're sort of just going really slow so there's more water. We're going in on a rising tide. So I was just going really slow and be late so there's more water under the keel because 10 centimeters, guys. Not a big fan of that, eh? <laughs> it's almost 10 o'clock now. Um, the pilot boat still hasn't come out yet but we've decided to start taking it on anyway. We've got the markers on the port side and it says in the guide to stay 10 to 15 meters off of the markers. So we're doing that and we're in 3.4 meters. One thing that I actually haven't ever looked at because it's just always been programmed that way is the depth sounder and whether it's set at 3.4 meters from the transducer, 3.4 meters from the waterline or 3.4 meters from underneath the keel. So, the only way to find out is by feel, and that's the thing, like around here, everything's green water, so you can't see the bottom, so you just have to go slow and go by feel and just hope you don't feel anything. I think this is the pilot crew now. Hey. Hello. Well, this is great. We've got a guy in the dinghy and another one that's jumped on board, and he's up on the bow, and so both of them together are gonna help us navigate through this Shallow Creek. Morning side. About to head into the mangroves. This is exciting. Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. We're hauling out. Crazy. Pretty chest, eh, buddy? Alright, so we're gonna go stern in, and it is quite a tight space. We don't have a bow thruster, and there's a bit of wind around, not too much, but we may need some help with the pilot. So we've just let the dinghy know, and he's on standby. So once this boat hops out the way, then we can turn around. There's so many expensive things around. Hold out. 
Perfect timing, Lou, this movie just ended. Oh, well, that was like really good. I was training that. When, I, when we came in, old mate's like, you turn around and reverse in. I was like, dude, we don't go backwards. <laughs> we don't have a bow thruster, so like, you know, instantly you lose the bow when there's wind like that. But old mate in the dinghy just held it perfectly. And then as we're backing up, I was worried as we're coming in, the bow would swing or anything into all these expensive bloody super yachts here. Yeah. Old mate had it perfectly. Nah, every, Slotted it, yeah. eh? That was a really good that entrance. Was really good. I'm stoked. I get so giddy when we get to a new place. I know we're just in a different marina, but like this is, look at my excitement. And this is why I love trying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I just love going to new places. And yeah. is it gonna be, yeah, it's just a new place for us. So I'm, I'm excited. Same. Do you think you can make it? It's going like, to be a hard landing. It's, it's like one of those landings where old bodies need to like do yeah. a roll. Yeah. But it's two or three inches deep of water.